Hi, Dr. Rifan. I'm Dr. Sophia from Indonesia. I want to ask you three questions. The first question, how about your opinion about LASIK surgery? Is it cosmetic surgery or therapeutic surgery? How about it? Well, thank you, Sophie, for having me here. And first of all, I'm a corneal refractive surgeon, so asking me about LASIK is like asking someone who makes shoes, do you need shoes? <laughs> I will be very honest with you. As a medical doctor, I, first of all, have my patient's benefit in mind. The main problem is that when people have a problem, a disease, they go to a doctor to cure it. Yes. Now, prescription, wearing glasses, it's not a disease, but it is an error. Yes. I divide my patients into a few groups, and I say people with low myopia and low hyperopia, mm -hmm. Mostly, if they can survive without glasses, should only get it if it's inhibiting them from doing something they love, like going to the army or police or some special job. Otherwise, I don't consider it cosmetic surgery. And I will tell you why. If you're highly myopic, let's say minus six, seven or eight, without your glasses or contacts, it's like a man who has two crutches without them. He cannot walk. So imagine that you are out swimming and your glasses fall out. You cannot see where the shore is. You cannot see where your friends are. If you're a parent and have small children and you swim away, do you see your children? You do not. So it's not cosmetic surgery. It is a type of surgery that increases quality of life and increases an individual's, I want to say, ability to live without fear about his visual problem. Now, the statistics are very clear. Refractive surgeons are the most common type of doctors who undergo refractive surgery because we know how great it is. Now, why do I say refractive surgeons? Because not all eye doctors are refractive surgeons. In my country, there's 20 people who even saw a laser for refractive surgery and 15 who use it out of 400 eye doctors. And it would be very foolish of us to think they know our technology and understand how we work. Everyone knows one or two horror stories about refractive surgery, but they don't think about the hundreds of thousands of people every year that undergo refractive surgery and they're happy. But asking me if LASIK is okay is funny because you know what? I'm a latent hyper And in about two to three weeks, I am getting LASIK. Now, I had LASIK in my left eye for mixed astigmatism 12 years ago, uh -huh. and now I'm 35, and my latent hyperopia is starting to bother me because sometimes it takes me a while to focus on objects that are near. Yeah. So in about two to three weeks, I will undergo uh -huh. LASIK. So if I am willing to do it, and I've seen everything from super outcomes to horrible situations, yeah. I don't know what better argument I can give your viewers and other doctors about what I think about it. Yeah. My father had LASIK, my wife had LASIK, okay. 40 doctors and employees of our clinic had LASIK. <laughs> so the question isn't, is LASIK safe? It's, are you a good candidate? And this stems from the fact, does the doctor you have have the technology and the morality and knowledge needed to evaluate you properly. I always tell my patients, listen, I'm doing your surgery today when you're 25. I have to consider all I know, and that's medically current knowledge, to simulate how you will see and your cornea is going to look in 60 years, because I want you to live to 90. So if I see some risk factors, I will say no to you, because I don't want you to have a problem, not today, but in 60 years. So it's about ethics, morality, knowledge, and the technology you have. Okay, thank you for the everyone so far. Your complete answer. Okay, uh, for the second question, for all technique and sufficient correction, which one the most funded from all of us? Well, Four years ago, femtolasic wavefront guided, mostly ocular when pupil size allows, was the most common surgery performed in our clinics. Yeah. Now, most of the patients where I live are myopic. There's very low hyperopes. I'm always special. So, <laughs> LASIK was the gold standard. I will be very honest, it has been one year, nine months, 
and nine days since I did my last myopic LASIK. I do not do LASIK for myopia anymore. If you're a candidate for LASIK, you're a candidate for lenticular surgery as well. So I tell my patients that I think that lenticular surgery in myopia is a better choice. There are some surgical differences, but long-term, less dry eye, better biomechanics, and all in all, a more, I want to say, not safe, but a safer uh, procedure. Because down the line, 20 years from now, a flap can dislocate when a child punches you, uh -huh. but a lenticule cannot. Yes. Down the line, if you start to develop dry eye, we will know it was not by a LASIK flap, uh, it was no. natural. <laughs> down the line, your cornea has more stiffness in its anterior part so your eye is safer. So with the newest generation of femtosecond lasers and the lenticular surgeries we have available today, I don't see any real advantage in myopic treatments being done LASIK versus lenticule. So all my patients are now getting lenticular surgery if they are able to do so. I have to be very honest, we had to do simple astigmatism, yeah. mixed astigmatism and hyperopia with LASIK, but since 10 days ago, we are now able to do pure astigmatism with lenticles as well. And this is another thing that's, you know, in a way gone from LASIK's ballpark forever. So what remains is mixed astigmatism and hyperopia where LASIK still is superior because the lenticles are not able to correct that right now, at least not on the devices that I have available. But yes, I do believe that in 10 to 15 years, we will remain with surface procedures and lenticular procedures. The, the classic lamellar procedure with a flap is probably going to be extinguished. Okay. Okay, <laughs> our lenticular section. Forever. <laughs> and the third question, the last question, uh, can you give us uh, advice for the medical uh, student or Young ophthalmologists want to start the practice question. Well, the best advice I could give you is find a surgeon who is a reputable surgeon with high-end technology and ask to be there for 10, 15, 20 days. Come, watch him work. Ask him questions. Listen to him speak to his patients. Watch him do surgery and do the post-ops. See how these people see on day one, day seven, day 30, and see with your eyes how much change refractive surgery can bring into someone's life. The other thing is, the best advice I want to give you is find someone who is going to explain it to you simply and honestly. Very often, very good doctors do not like to share their secrets. So I am the most transparent doctor you can find. What I know, I will teach you because I don't believe in competition. I believe that we together have to grow the refractive surgery market, not steal away from each other, but make it bigger so we are all happier. Hi, it's good very nice. Oh, thank you. Uh, terima kasih Sobat Usia Terima kasih Saya bersama dengan Dr. Diva Dan sangat senang sekali Semoga Diva Kemaci ini bermanfaat Buat kita semua Salam Sampai ketemu di episode Nasiratnya Lajib Kiki Bersambung Inat Lasi Inat Esal Esi Inat Lasi Inat Esal Esi